Emro signing in. What's going on, peeps? I thought I'd make this quick video about uh, registering a name in the state of Florida. As I told you all, every state has their own um, their own process as to how to properly register a, a name according to their rules. Keep in mind, every state is like a country within itself. Okay, so they all have their own jurisdiction, which means they all they all have their own rules. Last year, I used to uh, support. Um, the Minnesota assumed name certificate all the time because it was a lot of people. There was some people came to me, not a lot of people, but some people came to me and it, uh, thanking me because they they used a assumed name certificate to beat child support. But I also ran into a lot of people who did not do who it didn't work for. So it's hit and miss. The Minnesota assumed name certificate is hit and miss. It depends on what state you're in and how you apply it. Because everybody, I can't even say I read everybody's paperwork to see how they applied it. I just know they applied it and they won. So, um, but what I do know, so I thought I, I thought I just kind of uh, cause all, you know, in my own mind, the things that I taught last year, majority of it is, to me, is obsolete. Okay? Uh, not... Yeah, I guess I say majority of it, but a lot of it is relevant. But as far as like the the, the process as to how to properly just win and not have to go with the back and forth paperwork, all the COL forms and, you know, all these typing in all this, trying to show them, all you know, the what it, what the laws say in whatever area, whatever, those types of things, uh, you, you don't have to use all that in order to win, okay? Um all you have to do is apply what apply what's what's available to you. Um, let's just move forward. I just 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 follow me as I go with this Florida State, um, the Florida. It says Florida Senate right here, but I've also uh, went on another site said Florida Legislature, but they all the codes are you know, the the codes are pretty much the same. Uh, they say the same exact thing, um, regardless of which site you go to, as long as it's a government site of that state. Now check this out. I also got to clear this up. Like a lot of people, they, you know, they, some people, they, they I got to still attack that stigma where people say the codes don't apply to them. The codes don't apply to them. It applies to the, the legal fiction. It don't apply to living men and women. And if you think about what can a legal fiction do to a code with a code? If a legal fiction don't exist on paper, how can it read a code? How can it apply the code? You gotta understand that some of the things that we say is don't make sense. We use a we use a name, the name in all caps. We use that name to conduct business. You already doing it anyway. Your lights, your gas, your mortgage, your rent. I keep saying this because I get I get y'all need to get it. Y'all see that it's true. Your car insurance, all these things are all in that all caps name. Because that name is a business entity. You're conducting business. But you're supposed to properly register a name in your state, according to your state, according according to the state um, procedures that are set forth, uh, that are put in place for you to use it. Uh, you know, for you to do it properly and be recognized uh, in good standing. Okay, your name in upper lower case is your private name. Okay, but if the name in all capitalized letter is the public name, it's for public purposes. It's for commercial use. It's to conduct business. So your name in private is supposed to control the name in the public. That's how you create the separation. Okay? Keeping private private and keeping public public. Okay? Now, I'm also touch on this. Uh, I want to pause this video for I'm going to pause it for a minute. And I'm going to find, I'm going to go and find the filing on the, on the, in the Georgia, uh, you know, in the county where I was, where, where I'm from. Um, in Muskogee County, Georgia, I'm going to look it up and we'll find that filing where I actually use Emros, not Emros, but uh, L. McHale to do a registration statement. Okay. I do a reg did a registration statement after I, after I did this, this filing, this uh, registration that I'm showing y'all right here. I did this in Georgia according to Georgia statutes. Okay. But it didn't work because I made L. McHale. The I'm just I'm just gonna pause the video and show you. Okay, hold on a second. Okay, this is it, right here. As you can see, 
This is the case number. So for those who like to go and research shit, that's what I did. I did all this here. This is the newspaper uh, copyright right here. This is the copyright. I've given this to quite a few of you, uh, you guys. I did this back in 2016. Now, see, as, as I told y'all, I, re- I copyrighted the name. I did the copyright before my son was even born. He was born in June, in June of 2016. I did this in 2016, April, as you can see. The publication date, as you can see at the bottom, March the 9th, 2016. Uh, March 9th, the 16th. 23rd and the 30th of 2016. That's the ad number. As you can see, I did that. Okay? And that's the affidavit I got from, from the newspaper company right here. And they had this attached to it. So I got those two to put together. This was um this was unnecessary right here that I did right here. This part here, I, I think I, I got that from um where did I get this from? Custodian in Fulton County. This was in uh, in Atlanta when I called myself trying to go get it authenticated or whatever. I didn't need to do all that. That was some unnecessary shit. So disregard that. Those this here and that. Disregard that because I really I didn't really need that. But anyway, that either because I went and had the whole thing authenticated, which was totally unnecessary. It was wasting waste of energy. I was doing stuff, trying something, okay. But as you can see, it was filed as an assumed name. That's the case number. And that was the name. That's the address I was where I was living at that time. I don't live there now, so I ain't worried about y'all looking at it. So, as you can see, they typed that up. I didn't type this up. They typed this up. Okay? However, on my registration statement, it says, Please be advised that L. McHale, whose address, see what I'm saying, is the owner of the business, you know, to it, Michael Eugene Roseman. Which was the name on you know, on child support you know, on the, in the child support case, and so I tell you that's why I tell you guys to put the name that's on child support in that area where my all caps name is, and put your your born name, the name your father and mother gave you where where L McHale is at, because they this shit didn't work when I did this, okay? They kept sending me stuff. It did not work. You cannot put a name that you created and made yourself. And you never went before a judge and had your name legal or before before court and legally had it done to where your your legal name is changed to something else. Right, so no court is going to recognize L. McHale as being the uh, you know the what's hold up says it the owner of a certain business entity. I changed the word the word owner up on my own last go round the next go round. I'm gonna show you that in a minute. But this did not work because L. McHale. <laughs> it's not on that birth certificate. El, Mal- El McHale is not on that certificate of live birth. That's a name that I made up. So you can't use that shit. You had to use the name that your father and mother uh, named you. So as you can see, this was filed on December the, December the 5th right there. 2016. Hell, like four days before I had that second stroke. This shit didn't work. Okay. So this is why this is why I get fr- I get frustrated when people change what I showed you guys how to do and y'all do something else and put your own stuff on there. It frustrates me. Stop stop using nicknames you made up. Stop doing that because it does not work. Okay? Stick with the name your father and mother gave you. That is who that is who's the one that the only one that can claim that all caps name because that's the only that's if the, if if your nickname can claim it then that mean any public official can claim it too. That mean I can claim it. I can't claim your all caps name. That's not the name that that I, I'm not authorized to use that name. My the, the only name I can control is the name that my father and mother gave me, and any name that I create. Okay, and people say that the state created your no, they did not. They can't claim it. Okay, no no living man can claim your name other than you. Okay. Okay, now this is why this is why this is why I get frustrated about this here as you can see this is a filing it's, a, it's not a fake document I just pulled it up from the actual website it was filed okay that's the if you want to go look it up go look it up that's the case number okay this was this shit don't work authenticating it didn't work either that shit didn't make it no better I thought I was doing something this was some garbage this is some bullshit right here I wasted money okay now I'm gonna pause this and I'm gonna show you how the, the other one where I had to amend this. Okay, hold on a second. Now, this is the amended version. As you see, all I had to do was type it up again. I 
how I wrote amended at the top up there. Because, you know, uh, as you see, it's, it's different. I went back to the name that my father and mother gave me. Okay? And I also wrote on there, I'm the grantor beneficiary of the business. Now being carried on there. Okay? And, uh, and, then that, and the name is the name that they try to put on child support. Okay, this is why I this is why I get frustrated about when I show somebody specifically what I did to beat my child support case, why they stop fucking with me all together, and when you twist it up and change it up and try to do other stuff because you want to be out of the box, it pisses me off. I get upset because I want to see people get free, but I don't like nobody changing my stuff up, changing what I show them. It's not even my stuff. I'm gonna show you that this is what the statutes say. Okay, I'm doing exactly what the statutes say. And so when you do is that you do it the proper way, then you can get remedy. And let's see, I didn't go authenticate nothing, none of that stuff. They typed, they gave me another case number. I think that's a different case number. Might I don't know. I, I didn't even look at the other one. But anyway, as you can see, I re, they redid it. I filed this in. I redid it in March 2017. Now that was a publication or whatever. Um, the other one was in December of 2016. And once I got a certified copy of this and filed it in the case, they never sent me shit else. Okay? I disproved right here that me, the proper man, the, 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 uh, the, the natural person, you're naming up a lower case is considered a natural person. Okay? It's, a, it's like a, it's a private person. It's a natural person. That name it has, uh, is the grantor beneficiary of the all caps name. That, that name is... The upper lowercase name is the only name that can claim that name. No public official can turn around and call and claim the all caps name other than the, the, the where it originally came from, where it derived from. Okay, it originally derived from my my name given to me at birth when I first when I was first born. It was given to me, so any derivative thereof, I only I'm only I'm authorized to claim it and, and register it and, and file it like that. Nobody else can do that. And you'll never find any public official that'll do that because they can't do it. It's illegal. They won't. As a matter of fact, they can't do it. Period. They won't be allowed to do it. So they won't be allowed to break the law anyway. Okay. So no, don't think that some state official can do that shit. As you can see, this was filed in, on March the third, two thousand seventeen. Months later, after going through so much hell back and forth with these people, okay. And you see, that's the file. It was filed. Go do your research on me. You can do your research on me. You'll see. And if you go look up my court case, you'll see it. I was there was never any court case. It was never any order put in there for me to do any, any um to pay any child support. No numbers were ever conjured ever. Once I filed a certified copy of this into that court case, nobody sent me shit else. I was doing all the talking, and nobody was nobody was actually nobody was doing nothing. I'm the only one doing all the work. Trying now at that point, I was trying to chase and get my son back. So, and that's the only thing I've been trying to do ever since. But as far as child support go, that shit is a thing of the past. You know, as far as like fighting with these people. Never had to fight them, never had to be on child support. Okay? Now. Now. Back to the Florida statutes. Now, Florida is, is similar to, to Georgia as far as like the process itself. Only difference is Florida only has to put it in the newspaper one time. As opposed to Georgia, we have to do it and put it in the newspaper two times. Okay? Now, um, I, I don't know why in my thing they didn't have on there what I they didn't they didn't uh, they did not file what I put in the newspaper. I guess they didn't want to they didn't they feel like probably because it's an amended version. So all they did was added what was amended. They didn't add the whole thing. They didn't put the whole thing in the filing because I didn't have to file the whole thing all over again. It was just an amended part. So anyway. Let's move forward. Um, this is uh, Florida Statute 865.09, Fictitious Name Registration, short title. This section may, uh, may be cited as the Fictitious Name Act. Hmm. Okay. Uh, I'm going to look that up and probably do a video about it if you find some interesting stuff in that. Fictitious Name Act. Definitions as used in this section. It's always good to re read your definitions so you know what they mean when they say certain stuff. Fictitious name means any name under which a person transacts business in this state other than the person's legal name. Okay, and they're going to call you a person because this is, this is commercial talk. This is legalese. 
So this, they're going to call you a person. Keep in mind, your name, even your private name is considered a private person. It's considered a, um, a natural person. So they're going to call you a person. So don't be, don't run when you call you every time you hear the word person. Okay, I said it in my last video. I'm going to always say that so you can understand it. Okay? Now, B, business. Me, uh, means any enterprise or venture in which a person uh, sells, buys, exchanges, barter, uh, barters, deals, or represents uh, the, uh, the dealing in anything or article of value or renders services for compensation. Okay? C, division. Means division of corporation uh, of, the, of the Department of State. Okay? The division of corporations of the Department of State. So when you see the word divisions anytime, anywhere in these statutes in this chapter, then you know that's what they're talking about. Okay, now, uh, registration. A person may not engage in business un uh, under a fictitious name unless the person first registers the name with the division, there's that word division, with the division by filing a sworn statement listing um, the name to be registered the name, uh, the, the name, the, the, the mailing address of the, of the, uh, of the business. That's y'all. Remember, y'all saw that on my registration statement. Okay. Uh, the name and address of each owner. Remember, I put that on there. I was the only owner. The address was on there for me and for the entity. Okay. Um, of course, you know, I say, see, uh, of each owner, if a corporation, the federal employer's identification number and Florida incorporation or registration number certification by the applicant uh, by the applicant that um, certification by the applicant that the intention to register such a uh, such fictitious name has been advertised at least once in the new in a newspaper as defined in chapter 50 in the county where the principal place of business of a uh, of the applicant will be located as you see, I showed y'all the um, publication and put it in the newspaper. This is a, for Florida. If you're in another state, you may not have to do put it in the newspaper because I've read some states where it don't say to put it in the newspaper. So it's not required. But in Florida, it is. If you register in a name, conducting business, that's what you got to do in Florida. Okay? And Georgia, too. I'll show y'all that later, too. But this is really on for, for Florida. I've talked to like three or four people that, that live in Florida. Uh, probably more than that. But I can think about four off the top of my head that live in Florida who I've talked to. So um, I, this is for you guys. I need y'all to really pay attention to this and don't change off of it. Stay on it because this is exactly what you're going to need to beat your cases. You know, if you're going, if you know another route, then cool. That's cool. But if you come to Emrose and you want to want Emrose input, I'm telling you how I beat it. Okay. So here we go. <clears throat> let's let's continue with this. Uh, I think I stopped at E. Any other information the division may deem necessary to adequately um, to inform inform other governmental agencies and the public <clears throat> and the public as to the person or uh, the person so conducting business. Now um, they're telling you where is he in the county where the principal. Let's see, there's something else I wanted to back up to. Let's see, you got to file it with the division. By filing a sworn statement listing. Okay, it tells you to file it with the division. So you see the division, you got to file it. Bam. That's where you got to file it at. Because it tells you to file it with the division. No, I noticed that. I noticed that part. Let's see. It say must it say uh unless the person first registers the name, registers the name with the division. It says to register the name with the division. You got, you got to look up the division of corporations of the, of the Department of State. Look them up. Okay? Find out where they at. And I'm sure this in, I'm sure it's somewhere in every county probably has one. I'm sure that every county probably has one. But just look it up. Okay. <clears throat> I'm just showing you the, the instructions. They're telling you all the instructions. You got to see the codes as being the, is the, is the, the rules to the game. That's what the codes are. They're rules to the game. They tell you exactly how to win. All you got to do is pay attention to them and read them. Okay, now, 
Um, where is it? Where, where did I stop at? Um, such such statements shall be accompanied by uh by the applicable the applicable uh, processing fee and any other taxes or penalties owed to the state. Um, change of ownership. If if the ownership of the business registered under this section changes, the owner of the owner of record with the um the owner of record with the division shall file a cancellation and registration that meet the requirements set forth in subsection three within thirty days after um the occurrence of the change. Number five, term. Fictitious name registration under this under this this section shall be valid for a period of five years and expires on December thirty first on the fifth year of the fifth year. So after five after five years on the thirty first of December is expired. But you, of course, you got to, they're going to give you instructions and keep on talking. I'm going to keep going. It's going to tell you about renewing. Renewal. Renewal of the fictitious re re registration shall occur on or on or after January the 1st on, on or before December 31st of the, exp of the ex expiration year. Upon timely, of the, upon timely filing of a renewal statement, the effectiveness of the of the name registration is continued for for five years as as provided in subsection five. In the last year of the registration, the uh, the division shall notify the owner or registrant of the of the expiration of the fictitious name. If the owner or regist or registrant of the fictitious name has provided the department with the with the uh, with an electronic mail uh, mail address. Which uh, such notice shall be by electronic transmission. Okay, C. If the owner of the of the name registration fails to file a renewal a, re, a renewal and pay the appropriate processing fee prior to December the third thirty first of the year of expiration, the name registration expires. The division shall remove an expired or canceled name registration from its records and purge such registrations. Okay. Failure to receive the, uh, the registration of renewal requiring, uh, required by, by paragraph B shall not constitute grounds for appeal of a, of a registration's um, expiration on removal from the division's courts. I mean, uh, from the from the division's records. Sorry about that. Exemptions, a business form a, a business form by an attorney actively a, actively licensed and uh, to practice in this state um, by a person actively licensed by the Department of Business and Professional Regulations or the Department of Health for uh, the purpose of practicing his or her licensed profession or by any corporation, partnership, or commercial entity that is actively organized or registered with the Department of State is not, uh, is not required to register its name pursuant to, uh, to this section, unless the name under which business is to be conducted differs from the name as licensed or registered. Okay. Number eight, of effect of registration. Notwithstanding the provi uh, the provision of any the, the provision of any other law, the registration under this section is for public notice only. Mm, it's for public notice only, and gives rise to no presumption of of the registrant's rights to own or use the uh, the name registered. Okay, nor does nor does it affect trademarks, service mark trade name or corporate name uh, name rights previously acquired by others in the same or sim uh, uh, others in the same or or similar name okay they, they give my, if there's another Michael Roseman you that wants to register that name and he got to register that name hell I don't have exclusive rights to that name because if he got that name hell hell he get to register too okay bottom line you know you don't give exclusive rights like that bottom line if, but if but if I if I've already filed it, if I filed it and I'm in a, and I have a court case, I have my own. He'll have his own case number, and I'll have my own case number. I have my own registration file, and he'll have his own registration file. So it's not like they'll get mixed up, okay? 
Registration under this section does not reserve a fictitious name against against future use. Okay. Now penalties. This is what you gotta really pay attention to as well. And uh, just listen. If a business fails to comply with this section, the business, its members, and those interested uh, in doing such business may not maintain any action, suit, or proceeding in any state of the in any court of this state until this section is complied with. Any action, suit, or proceeding may not be maintained in any court of this of this state by any successor or assignee of such business on any right, claim, or demand arising out of the transaction of business by such business in, in this state until this section has been complied with. So you talking about going to federal court, suing somebody, if your name ain't registered, you're getting your case is going to get thrown out any damn way. You can't sue nobody. It's telling you you can't even sue nobody. You can't even do it. You got to register that name. That name need to be registered before you can move to court in, on a, in an offensive manner. You know what I'm saying? And you know to get them to do what you want them to do for you. You got to comply with what they require for you for you to do. And it's not hard to register these names. It's not hard at all. It's not even expensive. Some of y'all are paying like thousands of dollars on the internet from these damn gurus that ain't doing shit. And y'all can pay a Small, small, small portion of that just to put it in a newspaper or just register according, well, basically register according to your state statutes. And it's cheap. It's, it's very cheap. It's not even expensive. And something that small can cause so much harm if you don't do it. If you look at the penalties. This is one of the reasons why my cases were sitting still because I never filed it in the court case. I showed my registration statement in my child support case, but I didn't file it in the case where my, my petition for the writ of habeas corpus, I didn't file it in there. You know, I didn't realize I needed to file it in any case I need to, any case I need to open, I need to file it in there. I need to put anybody on notice that this name is registered. But I never, I didn't do that. I only did it in that one case. So, now I see why my cases are sitting still. You know, but anyway, here we go. Um, what else, where did I stop at? Um, a, B says, uh, the failure of a business to comply with this section does not impair the validity of any contract, deed, mortgage, security interest, lien, or, or act of such business and does not prevent such business from defending any action. Yeah, you can defend it, but you can't, you can't get them to move on your, you can't move on the, on the offense. And it's hard for you, and it doesn't stop you from defending. Yeah, I was able to defend the uh, defend the name, but they kept on trying. They kept sending me stuff, kept sending me stuff, kept sending me stuff, kept sending me stuff. They wouldn't just stop, regardless of how much I tried to defend myself. I was able to defend myself. At the same time, they wouldn't stop. They stopped once I filed that. Once I registered the name, they stopped. They couldn't stop by. They couldn't leave me alone. They couldn't leave me alone. They and they had to leave me alone after that. Okay, let me read that again. The failure of a business to comply with this section does not impair the validity of any contract, deed, mortgage, security, uh, interest, lien, or, or, or act of such business and does not prevent such business from defending any action, suit, or proceeding in any court of this state. However, the party ag aggrieved by non agreed by non complying by a non-complying business may be awarded reasonable attorney fees <laughs> and court costs uh, ne uh, necessitated by the non-complying business. This is one of the reasons why they want you to pay, uh, they want, uh, you know, the, 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 the opposing party on you know, the child support case always want you to pay the attorney fees. They want you to pay the, the court costs and attorney fees. They try to push that on you and throw that out there. Yeah, they don't tell you that's why, though. As you can see, this they're telling you right here. This is why you get those court fees. They want you to do. They want you to pay it because you ain't registered anyway. You you refuse to comply with how to register your pro your business properly. You know you're doing business anyway. Might as well do it. Anyway, C. Any person who fails to comply with this section commits a misdemeanor uh, of the second degree, punishable by uh, punishable as provided in um, what is it? I guess that's probably section uh, S. 77.082 or 775.083. Um, 
Um, 775.082 or 775.083. Okay, powers of department. The Department of State is granted the power reasonably, uh, reasonably necessary to enable it to, uh, to administer this section efficient, uh, efficiently to perform the duties herein imposed upon it. Okay? Hmm. Forms, registration, say registration, cancellation, and renewal shall be made on forms prescribed by the Department of State. Hmm. Which may which may include the uniform the uh, the uniform business report pursuant to 606.06 as a uh, as a means of satisfying the requirement of this section. Let me click on that real quick. Hope I don't lose my page. Uniform business report to create to create index records. And for re, uh, referral of the of the federal federal state or local agencies as requested by the registrant. Okay, here they say the department may may use a uniform business report to do that, and then as a, as a substitute for for an annual report or renewal uh, or renewal filing uh, filing required by chapter chapter four ninety five six zero seven six zero eight six zero nine. 617, 620, and 621, and 865, as means by by any registrant to apply for the issuance of a federal employee identification number uh, pursuant to any formal uh, agreement with the with the IRS of the United States. Um, to comply with any form, any formal agreement to, uh, I mean, for information exchange for for reciprocal issuance of a license permitted or registration to facilitate an, uh, and, uh, the creation and maintain of, of a database of the of the director of the business and any information regarding the activities of which uh, businesses <clears throat> which will further the international and domestic economic development Efforts of the state. Okay. I just want to kind of see what that said. Let's go back. Okay, now. Um, let's see. Processing fees. The Department of State shall charge the uh, collect uh, a collect a charge and collect non-refundable process fees as follows. For registration of a fictitious name, 50 bucks. For cancellation and registration of a fictitious name, fifty bucks. For renewal of fictitious name, fifty bucks. For furnishing a, a, a certified copy of a fictitious document, thirty bucks. For furnishing a certificate of status, ten bucks. Okay, it's got it all laid out for you right here. Deposit of funds. All funds are required to be paid. It said required to be paid um, to the Department of State pursuant to uh, something in my eye. Pursuant to this section shall be collected and deposited into the General Revenue Fund. Okay, prohibition. A fictitious name uh, registered as as provided in this section may not may not contain the words corporation incorporated or abbreviation in uh, corp or inc. Unless the person or business for which the name is registered is incorporated or has obtained a certificate of authority to transact business in in the state pursuant to Chapter Six Hundred Seven or Chapter um, Six Seventeen. Okay, you're not trying to LL. You're not trying to LLC it. You're not trying to incorporate it. You're not trying to you know. You're not trying to do neither one of those anyway. Okay, number fifteen, and I'm gonna go on and shut it on down in a minute. Okay. Um, legal designation of entity, notwithstanding any other provision of law to the contrary, the fictitious name registered as provided in this section for a corporation's limited liability company, <clears throat> limited liability partnership, or limited partnership is not required to contain the designation of the type of the legal entity in which the person or business is organized. 
<clears throat> including the terms corporation, limited liability company, limited liability partnership, limited partnership, or any abbreviation or derivative thereof. Okay? So that has nothing to do with you because you're not doing none of that to you to that name anyway. If that's only if you you know if it applies to you doing trying to do that if you're watching this video for that per that purpose then that's yours. But this is for people in court using that all caps name. That name in all caps, I know when you register it, that's what gives you your standing. If, if, you can move to court when you do that. You, that's why they ignore our paperwork a lot when they, we, we don't have that on the record. They don't know that the name is registered. You're saying, you know, wondering why shit's not working. You wonder why they railroad you. You know, but there are other ways, as I said in other videos, you, there are other ways to beat child support. Yes, you can move or win your case. It, this works for a traffic case, too. This works for this, this, this is your standing period in court. So you want to do this. You want to you want to make sure this is one way to do this. Other ways to do it as well, but this is how I'll do it. This is the way I conduct. This is how I handle my business in court. Okay? And uh, there are other ways I do stuff too, but as far as registering, especially child support, specifically child support, I would definitely whoop ass with this. Okay? So I thought I'd make this video so you guys will understand this is how you're going to do it. Okay? This is this has the... This, it's laid out right there, step by step, what you have to do, what to, what has to be done. You go back and rewind this video. You go back and look at my registration statement. It says everything that this thing requires. Don't change nothing. Don't put all this other extra stuff in there. You don't need to do all that. Matter of fact, I'm gonna give y'all a little a sniblet of what I'm gonna what I can even advise. You can even you can let me see if I can find this thing. Hold on a second. This is a tweaked version of my original copyright, okay? This is, as I told you all before, I've used, um, as you see, this is an email. I actually emailed it to someone. Um, I emailed it to, I actually emailed it to the newspaper company um, not too long ago, cause, just because I wanted to do the Michael E. Roseman. Just, this some extra shit I was doing. I didn't have to do it, but. I did it because I wanted to add. I wanted another version of it, as far as the the uh, to go in the newspaper, which is this right here. Basically, stating my status on the record as well as uh, as you can see right here. This constitutes actual and constructive notice of the copyright protection. I let you read that yourself. My birthday. Don't don't y'all go put my damn information out there. <laughs> anyway, Cap Nation. Anyway. I was speaking, if you want to look, want to look up the word in, in full life, you know, uh, look that word up. That actually, I'll show you in a second, since I'm doing a video anyway. And this is how I put it. This is what I put in the newspaper, okay? If you want to jot this down, screenshot it, because I know I'm not going to send you no Word document where I got it where you, can, you ain't got to write nothing out. You ain't got to type it up. Type it up. And don't change nothing except for my information. Now, if you go to putting some other stuff in there, you may start making sense of stuff that don't make sense and you wonder why it don't work. You know, anyway, just take my name out, put your name in there. Take my birthday out, put your birthday in there. And then both, you know, when I when I said Michael E. Roseman, you're going to put, well, if you're on child support, that's the name you're going to put in there, the name that's on child support. Okay? The name that's on child support goes where Michael E. Roseman goes. Okay? Where Michael Eugene Roseman is, which is my upper lowercase name, that's you put your upper lowercase name there. Do not put a nickname there. Do not put no name that you never went before a judge and got a decree for because they will not recognize it. You cannot you cannot bully your way into getting respect from these, these officials because you make up a name. As I showed y'all in the beginning of this video, L. McHale did not fucking work. Okay, it does not work. You got to use it. You got to, in order to get these people off your ass, you got to, you got to follow the rules. You can't make up stuff as you go and say, you know, we are the people. We, we don't want that. We are the law and we get to do what we want to do. No, you don't get to do what the fuck you want to do. You have a, you have to follow the rules too. And they got rules put in place for everybody to follow to keep things in order. We can't just go haywire. It's just like when people make up these tags and put them on their car and expect the police to it. When they get pulled over, they're supposed to get respected because they private. You know, I'm not from this jurisdiction. I'm not a U.S. citizen. And then you get your ass snatched out your car and think they did you wrong. You got to follow and instruct. There's a, there's a procedure for everything. 
So you can't just make up shit as you go and think they're supposed to respect it. They will not respect your shit. You have to follow. You got to follow the follow. Everything has to be in decency and in order, just like they tell you in church. It's in the scriptures too. You have to be. Everything has to be in order. You don't get to just go haywire and make up shit as you go and just put stuff there. Okay, then but this is what I put here, and I, where you see Richmond County, Georgia, that's where I, that's the county where I was born. Okay, that's where the state was created. That's why I said original, dom, originally domiciled in Muskogee County, Georgia. Okay, and I and I stated my claim. I, I stated my stated my uh, my position as a general executive over and beneficiary over that estate. So any 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 derivative they might want to come with. I'm still claiming that estate. So you're trying to get to that estate. That's what you're trying to do is administer that estate. So I'm taking control. I'm letting you know it's public notice that this is that I'm the general executive over that. Okay? You don't get to control that. Okay? That's the reason why I made another version of it. Okay? And all this other stuff right here. This is another. This is part two. Just gonna give it a few seconds. You can screenshot it and type it up. It's so totally up to you. And that address at the bottom i don't live there either so don't try to stalk me <laughs> that's actually the physical address of the post office and my p.o box number so I, that's how i chose to do it so but you can you can type you know whatever address you choose to have on there that's totally up to you but you put your apple or however means of communication you want them to communicate you with you uh that's cool that's up to you that's the first that's the first half First half, second half. Okay, put that in the newspaper. If you're in Florida, put it in the newspaper for one week, one publication. All you need is one. Get an affidavit from the newspaper company. They will give you a new uh, an affidavit. They will give you a newspaper app. Uh, they give you affidavit. Conf- the fuck? God damn it! I put this thing on down. I know I put this thing on goddamn. Do not disturb. God damn, I hate that shit. I know I put this shit on Do Not Disturb. How the fuck I get interrupted like that? See, it's on Do Not Disturb. How the fuck I'm still getting calls? I gotta start my goddamn video over. I ain't starting shit over. I'm gonna, I'm gonna trim that motherfucker. Okay, I don't know how to hear my phone ring like that, but anyway, I got it on Do Not Disturb, so I don't know how the hell I got a call. But anyway, I guess I was supposed to put on airplane mode, like I usually, like I normally do. But anyway, you got it right here. You got it right here. Type it up. Get your affid- the affidavit from the newspaper company, and you and and that affidavit is going to have a copy of this with it attached to it anyway, and you're going to type your registration statement up. That you this is similar to the one that you saw at the, at the top, you know, at the top of the video. You type that on up, get it notarized, put both of those together, those those notarized documents together, and you file it where it's supposed to go. It tells you where to file it in the statutes, so that's where you're gonna take it to. Look it up, find out where they are, and file it properly. Get your get your business handled, and whoop some ass. That's simple. Okay, don't come away from it. Don't don't add nothing to it. Don't take away from it. Okay? Strictly just like that. All right? All right, y'all. I'm going to get out of here, y'all. Emrose signing out.